Hi everybody. Uh, we uh, Leah up next for trip panel. And uh, wait a second. All right, we have we have Leah with hi. We have Leah with her panel coming up. And uh, I think you guys will be good to go right now. Take it away. Awesome. Okay. Well, to answer Kara's off-camera question, uh, I asked for all sorts of comments and questions and concerns, everything about cosplay, um, whether current projects or what you're wanting to work on in the future or just harebrained ideas. Um, so they are all listed on my Twitter and some on my Facebook. And we are also live on KawaiiCon's Twitch. So I'm pulling that chat up too, so we can see what they say. That was weird. Like when you went wee, I just heard like a little like wee kind of noise. And oh, it's my birds. Really well. It's the birds. <laughs> They're loud. Oh my God. They're so cute. Anyway, hi guys. Weirdest introduction ever. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Leah Rose. I'm a local now, but by way of Arizona cosplayer and host and really, really geeky content creator. Uh, and if you hear a meow, it's Nico underneath my chair. Uh, and this is uh, what we call Hanai sister. You're my spirit sister, not biologically, but close enough. Uh, Karen Nicole, AZ Power Girl. Um, I randomly was like, hey, you want to talk at people with me? And she said, yes. Yeah. So yeah. I like you talking to people. I, I like talking to people. Oh my God, okay. This Leah opening theme song is baller. Thanks, Remy. Appreciate it. A shark and the goblin queen. Get hype. Oh my god, that's so cute. Um, okay, so I guess let's go ahead and um, I'm just going to start going through questions that were posted on my social um, Twitch chat. If you guys have any thing that you want to contribute, it doesn't need to be a question in and of itself. It can just be more hype training or whatever the case may be. Uh, just let us know. Okay. So, uh, Noah had some really awesome specific questions about cosplay. I know he's getting into it uh, for real, for real, for the first time, which is really cool. He's making this huge armor set um, that he got off of someone and modified, which is my absolute favorite thing. Um, oh, is that my computer? Yours? Probably mine. That was mine. Um, I turned it up to hear you better. How dare? It's okay. You can hear me better. It's fine. I won't start yelling though. Um, also, I'm taking off my shark head because, oh my god, it's like a thousand degrees and I live in Kaimuki and there's no air conditioning and wow, that hair. Oh, choice. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and preface this looking at a bunch of these questions because they're really specific about like foams and heat guns and adhesives and stuff like that. My biggest uh, generalized, especially when it comes to foam, a uh, hint is to invest in Kamui Cosplay's ebook. Um, they're really, really cheap. She goes through absolutely everything that you need to know um, about pretty much absolutely everything. Um, they're really great reference material. Uh, hashtag not font. Um, I wish she's like an icon. Um, but yeah, if you if you're looking for specific questions about foams, she would know better than anybody else on this planet. Um, if you guys don't know Kamui Cosplay Svetlana, she's a German cosplayer who, you, you Google her, you'll know her when you see her. Um, is she here? Uh, specific, specific. Okay, uh, I did see a couple of questions about this too. What is the best advice you have to handle a particularly complex to get out of costume uh, when it comes to overheating and bathroom breaks? Take someone with you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know that trope of like the the woman in the wedding dress who needs her friends to hold it up above her head so she can go pee. Like that's that's basically what you have to do. Um, yeah. Well, we know that the, the closer you get to the bathroom, the more you have to pee. So, so yeah, you gotta go and go now. And and when you when you're when you're walking to the bathroom, people are gonna stop you and they're be like, "Can I get a picture?" And you're like, "Of course." And then another two steps, "Can I get a picture?" Sure. And then in a few steps, can, can I get a picture? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I got to go right now. 
<laughs> and then I'm sorry, there, I love you, but no. And you get in there and then you're like <laughs> trying to undo this thing so that you can paint. <laughs> and then you just sit there and you while you're like, okay. I'm just gonna take this as an opportunity to have a breather. <laughs> yep, absolutely. I, yeah, I mean, clearly by how animated we just got, we don't have any sort of experience with that ever happening. What are you talking about? Um, but yeah, so uh, point one, a handler, or just like a friend who's in a less complicated costume. Um, what some of my girlfriends and I like to do is uh, whoever's wearing like a crazy big costume or just something complicated where they might need help, um, try to kind of like plan it. So not everybody's going hard on the same day. So like at least one person is able to like take off a glove and help you undo snaps on the back of your costume. Like just, just pre planning, pre planning. <laughs> Otherwise it's like um, a bunch of bicycles falling over like dominoes. <laughs> No, that's perfect. I do remember one time when I think it was Kara, I know you were there. Uh shoot. I couldn't pull off like some sort of armor piece that connected on my back, but nobody else could come with me to the bathroom or like nobody else could help me get it undone. So I'm just like standing outside of the bathroom like hello, friendly female uh <laughs> female people. Can you please help? Please. And it worked. So people are great. Um that's why you see so many cosplayers in the restroom. Yeah, because we are taking our time um, and pray real hard that the bathroom's larger stalls are available. Yeah, like, especially if you're in armor. I, I personally, like, I'm kind of weird about that and, like, really don't like using the handicap stalls. But if you're in a large costume and you need that maneuverability, like, just go really fast and be very apologetic. Somebody who actually needs it is in the lobby waiting. So... You do what you gotta do. Um, okay, okay, sorry, moving on. Um, 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 oh, there's a couple of really good questions uh, from Noe and other people about uh, uh, contests. So personally, I don't have a ton of exper experience lately in being a participant in contests. Um, I do a lot more hosting. Um, and I don't even necessarily like to judge as much anymore just because I, I get so invested because I creep on everybody's Instagram. Like I'm double tapping everybody's progress photos. I know I'm like, I, I'm, I'm too into it. I don't know if I could, my bias is everyone. So I don't know. Um, but the first question about contests was uh, entering with bot cosplays that you've modified. Um, I personally, depending on the contest, um, would not enter with something that you did not mainly build yourself. If it's something that you like, you built some stuff, but you didn't build like the boots or it was on a base of normal clothes or something, sure, that's, that's totally fine. But be very, very honest and accurate about what parts, like who did what parts. Um, I, I personally would not enter a contest with something that you didn't at least 75% of the way build yourself. Um, what do you think? Because I know that we've been around a bunch of different, different cons have different kinds of contests too. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's some contests that are um, exhibition. And mm -hmm. like, there was a guy in Branson that won the exhibition portion because he was like the spitting image of Michael J. Fox. And he oh, was wow. doing the Marty McFly. Well, you know, he's not going to make the vest and the shirt. And because it's, but he got out there and he performed, you know, like he put on a whole show and he had his girlfriend doing, um, you know, Marty's girlfriend. And they did mm -hmm. make her pants, but they, they really put on an entire performance. And yeah. so they did win the exhibition category because. That's what it was. It was it was more performance based, and that's a big part of cosplay that I think a lot of people, especially competition people, forget. They're very much into the craftsmanship, and craftsmanship is wonderful and great, and we love it. But there's also the play part of cosplay. Right. Oh, 
sorry, I looked at my hair in the in the camera and got very frustrated with it. Um, I think somebody actually asked uh, something about that as well too. Yeah, here we go, here we go. Um, seen a few cosplay contests where they ask for you to do like a skit type thing, not a particularly outgoing person. Uh, skit is terrifying. No, thank you. Any advice for someone to help overcome that? So generally speaking, and again, every convention is a little bit different. Um, generally speaking, a, a skit is not necessary unless it's for that specific segment. Like there can be in, in a lot of larger conventions where they have like many, many, many more participants, they'll have a completely separate um, like performance skit category that has nothing to do with craftsmanship. So um, don't feel obligated, honestly. Don't do anything that you're not comfortable doing. Um, and even if you are required to do a skit or go on stage or whatever the case may be, just pose, just look cool. Like do a do one of the Fortnite dances. Like literally, you can you can do anything. Like just don't don't force yourself like past the point of like yeah, go out of your comfort zone, but not like to a fault, if that makes sense. And also, no obligation. Well, you know, that goes into the different kinds of shows. I find anime shows a lot of times require skits, whereas Comic Cons don't. Um, Mexico is huge on skits. Yeah. Like, a, you, you do a show in Mexico, you're doing a skit. And so, and you're making your costume. So, maybe find a show that doesn't require a skit. Or, like Leah said, maybe just pose do a fortnight dance, do something to relay the character's personality, um, do what you can do. And, you know, think of that first contest as kind of your practice. That's the getting your feet wet. Yeah. And yeah. you're going to, you're going to get those, that applause and those cheers. And then you're going to be like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it really does take just like one little thing to get over that like little tiny hump of fear. And then you're good. Like, and then suddenly, and I feel like that's what kind of happens with a lot of cosplayers is you start much more unsure, much more introverted. You enter, like you go to one con and you're like, these are my people, everything is fine. Like, I mean, that's how it was for me. Um, side note, Kara, we had 69 viewers for a second there. It's higher now. Ah, but... <laughs> 69. Um, I don't know what that means, Jess. Uh, <laughs> sorry, there were some uh, comments in Twitch that we oh, missed. Uh, boundary form with people in the bathroom when you need help is real truth uh when you do judge what do you look for in costumes um honestly when i do judge it's it's really dependent again on the show um and i know a lot of the kamainas a lot of the local cosplayers haven't necessarily had the chance to see too many other uh conventions and how they run their contests uh but for me i really look for um doing their research a little bit like if if they said like i couldn't figure out this part like basically anything that shows that they paid attention to detail um it doesn't need to be exactly screen accurate or historically accurate or anything like that but just like noticing the little stuff is really cool um finished seams is a huge one uh don't just leave like some wimpy little whip stitch that if you like sneeze in the costume it's just going to completely unravel have done that before um I, I don't, I really don't know. It's just, it's just so, so dependent. One thing I try to really stay away from though, is I try to stay away from the costumes that are a lot of bark and no bite, if that makes sense. Like a huge suit of armor is very impressive looking, but if you look up close and the paint's bubbling and like it's coming apart where like at the joints, maybe not, looks cool from a distance, not a winner. That's a really good point. A lot of people always say, oh, why didn't this Hulk Buster win? Or why didn't this big suit of armor win? And it's like, you look up close and you're right. Maybe the details aren't there. Maybe the patience wasn't there. Maybe the glue's coming undone. Um, I, I did a show, Vegas, one year, and there were some people that were disappointed that the guy who won won there. He was like, oh, he was just wearing, um, you know, like regular clothes. It's like, well, one, that was the character, but if you saw the prosthetics up close, oh, nice. the prosthetics were seamless. You could oh. not 
tell that it was a prosthetic. Like it was this ogre face, but it was subtle and it was just, the makeup was perfect. Everything was just absolutely seamless and he made it all himself. So I can understand that. Um, yeah. Put out your work. So the guy that was complaining to me, he's like, well, I programmed my doctor, um, my doctor strange, you know, the, the, the thing with the lights and stuff. Oh, the, like, wah, yeah. Yeah. And this guy had like programmed all of that onto this, uh, you know, onto this device and he did all of the computer work and everything. That's great. But if you don't tell us, then we don't know. Yeah, you exactly. Know. That's, so, that's a huge one. That's a huge one. If you don't tell the judges, they don't know. Like, if you want something to stick out, like, tell us. If you want us to know how much time and energy you put into this specific part, tell us. Like, if you're proud of your themes, flip that over and show us. Like, yes. we're not mind readers. We're not mind readers. Well, people will go out on stage and they'll they'll do a big ta-da for the crowd. And I always tell them, stop at the judges. Look every judge right in the eye and yeah. show them what you want to show them. Yeah, yeah, that's so, and and I know that a lot of times, um, here at least, uh, there's not necessarily a, um, sorry, I thought I was about to sneeze. Uh, here necessarily, we don't necessarily do the judges on stage and you walk past them sort of deal. Uh, mm -hmm. But then, or even in the judging room beforehand, you like, don't let the nerves get to you. Like the judges are fellow geeks that are like seriously just there to hang out and have a good time exactly like you. So just like take a breath, like let it chill, have a conversation. Don't like verbally vomit and then run away. Like, so just who is fine. Um, oh, what was the other one? Sorry, I don't want to like get too behind on the Twitch comments. You guys are so sweet. Uh, what's your favorite cosplay you've done? That's like choosing a favorite child. But if I had to pick one, Rogue from the X-Men. What about you? Power Girl. It's where we, it's where we started. Yeah, it's, it's where we started. It's kind of like, like your home costume. Yeah. Uh, getting into it is like getting into a nice robe. You're just like, ah, oh, this feels right. This is you just good. you feel, yeah, you feel like like you belong there. Yeah, no, that's so true. I can't wait to actually bleach the front of my hair. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm getting quarantine hair crazy. I'm doing it anyway. Um, <laughs> how long does it take to get dressed in makeup? Uh, that is entirely dependent. Like my Siri costume can take like 15 minutes if I'm like moving with some quickness. Uh, my Mercy from Overwatch can take like an hour if I'm busting with the harness for the wings and everything like that. So it's, and, and the, again, that's still probably moving with some quickness. So it, give yourself at least an hour or two in the morning. Mm -hmm. Even if you think you need 10 minutes, just take your time. Um, makeup, I'm very, very lazy and winged eyeliner and red lipstick because, you know, rogue. Uh, if cosplaying a new anime, be sure to promo the new anime. The judges don't always watch everything. Yeah, I really love it when people show up with like reference pictures. It doesn't have to be printed. It can be just like on your phone. But if I don't know the character, like just, just show me what I'm comparing you to the source material. Okay. Um, Very true. Okay. Uh, what was the most challenging costume or element you've made? What made it so challenging? Um, probably the Mercy, like Mercy in general, but the Mercy wings are really tough because harnesses are not my strong suit, like that are actually like kind of load bearing. Um, so that one, I still haven't perfected my handmade version yet. Um, and I have a personal vendetta against Billy Tucci's she because he went to fashion school and pointedly made the character wear this like quilted red fabric, but like the samurai armor made out of it. And I you killed it though. You um, really did an amazing job on that costume. Thank you. I got so much help on that first one. I remade it again and I was so much happier with it. 
need to redo some things, but that's beside the point. Everything's a work in progress. Uh, what about you? What's like the hardest thing that you've ever worked on? Well, um, my Wonder Woman armor was a real pain uh, because Ooh. I really was going for a, like a specific thing and it was, it just kept like cutting on me. Uh, I was using car vinyl car wrap or because I wanted it to be really shiny and to get it like pushed in and not bubbling. So working with vinyl car wrap is, you know, you got to try to make sure it doesn't bubble. And so that's kind of a pain. Um, so that's been my biggest one so far. I, uh, I did make a set, a diva, a diva headset and oh, yeah. it turned out like trash. So I, I just bought a diva headset uh so okay, yeah. we're all trash here so it's fine i want okay. to work again turned out terrible so and then i'm working on my seven of nine uh under like under corset because corset seven of nine corset doesn't go up and down it actually comes in like this it's weird that is so strange like that corseting is ask corey corey will know uh, yeah. <laughs> okay uh we have a lot of questions about traveling with cosplay you are the queen of this so i'm gonna let you do you boo boo you've done your traveling too um i think that when we try <laughs> we, take our, we take our weakest costumes because we yeah. need to make sure that we can get them on the airplane because you're not just taking your costumes you're taking you know what you need for your trip and you're taking your product so, cause I'm a professional cosplayer. Like I have products to take, I've got prints and books and, you know, stuff like that. So um, you've got to have enough for everything. And then you want to make sure that you don't, you know, have anything destroyed. There was a girl where yeah. TSA cut her wig open to, and, and drenched it and they just destroyed all of her stuff. It was terrible. Uh, so, you know, it, it's uh, what a lot of people do is pack their armor in their clothes. So use a hard suitcase if you're if you're taking something like armor or anything that's breakable. Um, put a note in there. Tell TSA note, what it is. The note has saved my butt on so many occasions. Just like on the back of one of my prints. So like. <laughs> They can even like clip it over and see like, oh, okay, she's one of those weirdos, got it. I'll be like, hi, TSA agents. I'm going to Comic-Con. This stuff is really fragile. Please, please, please put it back exactly and just be careful. Have a great day. Yeah. Love you. Tell them what yeah. it is. is it, this is yeah. foam. This is, you know, yeah. these are all the things that are in there. You know, this is an airsoft gun. This is, you know, whatever it is. Significant pieces of silicone uh, will also uh, pop really strangely in the x-ray machine. So basically, if you have anything like of substance that's not just like cloth, like lift mm -hmm. what it is. Um, oh, so I said, uh, Chizuko says, I usually bring a small sewing kit with me to conventions. Good girl. Uh, good person. I don't know if she's a good boy or girl. Sorry. Um, what general items would be good to include for on-site cosplay repairs? Double-sided tape. Double-sided tape. Super glue. Huh? What was the last one? Sorry. I'm just agreeing with you. Okay, yeah. The, the, the audio cut for like half a second. The exactly wrong half a second. Um, a couple of different colors of nail polish because you can do that to touch up your paint if it's crust real bad. Mm -hmm. Um... I would say flats or slippers because if you have a shoe malfunction, that will literally f up your whole day. Um, safety pins, mm -hmm. safety pins, tape, any like um, electrical tape can be pretty good as well. Um, yeah, I take a hot glue gun when I can. A lot of cons are starting to have um, cosplay recovery rooms, and those are really fantastic. I love the fact that those have started like becoming more of a thing because oh lifesavers. Um oh gosh, what was I about to say? Oh, hairspray. Hairspray uh, is magical. Like not just for your hair, but also for your hair, but for stopping fabrics from running. Um mm -hmm. nail polish does that too, but like also hairspray is just good to have. 
Um, there was you can one set your makeup. Yeah. Side note, that is a, a drag queen trick. Um, also, if you don't know already, uh, cosplayers owe drag queens everything. Um, all of our best hacks came from drag. Uh, so if you have heavy makeup and if your skin can handle it, and it's once in a very, very great while, you can use hairspray to set your makeup. Do I recommend it? No, but do I do it at cons? Yes. <laughs> So, well, especially if you're thanks. doing like a full face, like if you're doing a full face Harley Quinn or, you know, oh, yeah. something where you've got tons and tons of makeup on you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, also good to know where the nearest convenience store is. Yes. Oh my God, Kara. So, so she was here for the last in-person con that we had, um, but she was not here when the 7-Eleven was directly, or the Circle K, I think it was directly across from the convention center. And it was chef's kiss like it was beautiful and perfect and magical and then they tore it down and like like the f f in chat for pay your respects to the convenience store by the convention center like oh my god all of us are just like sobbing it was so bad um and it's so all so, see exactly uh oh wait there was another one what's your dream cosplay that you've always wanted to do and you're really excited to do but haven't had time to do yet Seven of nine. Yeah, yeah. Seven of nine from Voyager. So she's, the costumes made, I actually had it made by Courtney Lee Creations because she's so good. And I yeah. did not want to mess up. So now I'm working on the under, the underbody. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you're finally doing that. Like, I've been wanting you to do that for so long. Um, trying to think. Mine would probably be, I don't know if any of you guys have ever played this game, but I've always kind of had a bug up my butt to do Rose from Legend of the Dragoon. Um, old video game, real armory, real like Aspen Matthews from like Aspen Comics, like Michael Turner Fathom stuff, like very organic armor with giant wings. And like, it was, it's beautiful, but it's also like, I need to do that when I can afford a two bedroom place by myself and then just like destroy the one room for the sake of cosplay. Um, Beautiful PlayStation game. Yep. Yep, exactly. Uh, magnets or Velcro? Magnets. Yeah. Velcro if it's a magnet is the enemy of spandex. It will ruin your spandex. It'll ruin your gloves. Hate Velcro. Yeah. Sometimes Velcro is the only thing that you can use for whatever reason, but rare but earth magnets. If you're like armor or something, then yeah, Velcro. But if yeah, you yeah, yeah. are wearing spandex in any way that needs to be shown, mm -hmm. they would. Yeah, no, thousand percent agree. Like, but you just, you have to get really strong magnets in order for it to work. Otherwise you're kind of like- You gotta get the neodymium and they're expensive. They, they really are, but magnets, magnets are better than Velcro in many, many, many cases. Um, uh, if you wanted to help out, oh, this is a good one. If you want to help out with stuff like Make a Wish or things like that, where there's like costumes and kids in hospitals, et cetera, et cetera, uh, should you just reach out and see what happens? Or is there an etiquette to reaching out? Um, there's usually a lot of like organizations that will actually already have that kind of unlock. Um, not to say that you can't join them, but just more like they, the, the, place you reach out to may say something like oh thanks we already have these people to do it um but reaching out is not a problem um you like absolutely can but also um i would make sure to do your research first to see if there is a organization that already does that and then contact them about joining um one thing about that that i did want to kind of point out because i've seen this a lot lately um can we just like have a minute to talk about like being opportunistic about being like a charity cosplayer to a fault? Because I've seen a lot of people who are trying to kind of take advantage of like the protests and, and BLM and stuff like that in order to do some really, really messed up things, but it's okay because it's for charity. Like tact, just tact. <laughs> like, Tread very carefully, because poof, poof. Sorry, I could, I could just have a. I need a, I need an after hours panel just so it can be like Leah ranting about stuff. Yes, um, we should go 
only do an after hours type panel, huh? Like the down and oh dirty. My God. <laughs> Leah and Kara complain about things. Actually, Angel is our time slot tonight. Oh my God. I want to do that so bad now. Um, Aftermath says, I love Velcro. I had bad luck with magnets. And see, like, it's, it's so dependent on like the project that you're working on. Like, Velcro can just bite back a lot harder than magnets can. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, there is. Oh, oh, this kind of goes full, like, back, full, blah, 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 back full circle. That's a phrase uh, to what we were talking about earlier with having to go shishi. Do you have any recommendations for people who like to take pictures with cosplayers, etiquette wise? Um, always ask. Yeah, always ask. And um, like a lot of people want to put their arm around you and that puts like your shoulder in their armpit and you can get like pit stains on your costume. So like, don't put your, like, don't put your armpit on their shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. It's like very much cosplay is not permission. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Archel Don says, if only one of you had a Twitch channel, you could do the after hours panel on. Valid valid point um uh, yeah cosplay is not consent definitely always ask um oh and if we're eating please don't stand there and wait for us because that's kind of awkward oh, don't like, just worry. I'll wait. no yeah. no because i'm not eating my french fries with you being like waiting no we're not you want to buy yeah like here comes the choo-choo train like what do you want <laughs> um so yeah <laughs> Glad you appreciated that. Oh my god. So yeah, um context clues, always ask permission. Um no touchy touchy unless they say it's okay. Or like you know how like Keanu Reeves is, like always does the hover hand? Like that's okay. The hover hand is fine. Like it's not weird and neck beauty, it's respecting the costume and us as individuals. Um oh, yeah. and you know, and be respectful. Like yeah. like just be like so uh can you bend over so um can can you turn around yeah can you do all this stuff that puts you in like really weird position no no i cannot <laughs> oh my gosh so many questions this makes me so happy you guys oh my god uh did i miss anything in twitch no okay moving on to twitter um how are you the sweetest no you uh how do you fight perfectionism I love the, I don't know exactly how the actual like turn of the phrase goes, but it's something to the extent of like, perfect is the enemy of good or perfect is the enemy of great, where it's like, don't be so obsessed with your final result being perfect that you miss an opportunity to be really, really good and just like frustrate yourself in the process. Um, like, I honestly, I am a cosplay granny uh courtney and i coined that phrase um like i i'm too old for this crap like i don't have the time to make a completely period accurate set of fantasy armor like because of the perfectionism bug bit me like just it's okay like we're all a bunch of grown ass adults or not whatever <laughs> um just we're we're dressing up like it's okay if it's not super perfect like this these costumes aren't going to last forever anyway like we're yeah. we're not going to be able to hang on to everything forever like it doesn't need to be perfect why does it need to be perfect like i i think that the satisfaction of it being perfect is totally outweighed by the stress that that puts on you so that's just me um it's not just you. that's oh, man, very have no shame hi yeah and honestly especially right now like especially with like the year of our lord 2020 um freaking there's so much going on and there's so much that we're fighting against and and so many things working against us like let's just be happy that we can still do some of the stuff that we love to do and not freak out like I, th I think that 2020 is definitely going to be a, a reckoning of people like realizing what's important, like to what level and like getting rid of, of things or 
non-tangible things that don't serve them. And I think that perfectionism to a fault is at the top of the list. Um, I think here, before I get all serious, like, uh, Twitter, da, 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 a bunch of Among Us super sus questions. Uh, what's the best, most reliable material for crafting pauldrons? Um, EVA foam is fantastic and cheap. I really like a material called Sintra. Um, Warbler, everybody knows Warbler. Thermoplastic, really cool. Sintra is a little bit harder to work with, but it is much harder. It's the same material that road signs are made out of. Um, still thermoplastic, but just like hardcore. Um, na, 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 na. How have you adapted to the way cosplay has been perceived and accepted over the last decade? Oh, big question. Do you try to appeal to new audiences or do you stick to what you know in terms of being a public figure? Also, I love you. I love you too. That is a really good question. Honestly, like that's a lot. I don't even know where to start on that one. Um, it's, it's kind of really nice at least in, in my opinion, um, that, you know how people will do that whole thing of like, oh my God, when I was a kid, I got beat up for watching anime and stuff like that. And like having a strange pseudo, like pay your dues sort of mentality. And I'm not about that. I love the fact that it's more mainstream now because it means that stuff that I like is more easily accessible. And it means that I can make more friends because they see that I'm cosplaying such and such thing and they're like you're a nerd I'm a nerd let's nerd together and it's great so it's it's been interesting just to see it transform um especially being like a, a older millennial and like just seeing all the new kids come in and being like oh look at these little babies I still don't understand how I'm stuck but that's that's just a personal problem um, <laughs> Do you try to appeal to new audiences or do you stick to what you know in terms of being a public figure? You take that one, Kara. I do what I want. Um, you know, people are always, <laughs> you know, oh, what about Tumblr? Go on Tumblr. Like you can only maintain so many social medias. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, people are everywhere. You can only maintain so much, you know, it's hard because they say that you can't, like you gotta be on Twitch like, at least for three hours or more at a time. People are on Twitch every single day. It's really hard to maintain a life and be on Twitch for, you know, for three, four, five hours a day, plus make things, plus shoot, plus work, plus do whatever else you need to do. So if you have the ability to be on Twitch all those hours a day and that's your jam, you're probably not gonna be posting on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter all day long. You know, some people yeah. are Twitter whores. They love Twitter. They're there all day long on Twitter. Some people are on Facebook. Some people, I don't think anyone's on Tumblr anymore. Um, you know, you yeah. do kind of move around with what is available. Like there's, you know, Patreon. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do OnlyFans now. And mm -hmm. I don't have OnlyFans. Some people, a lot of people do, but there is a stigma with OnlyFans that, you know, mm -hmm. if someone's asking you if you have an OnlyFans, they want to know if you're doing nudes. Like, yeah, if you that's what that question. on OnlyFans, they are not going to be happy. So, yep. you know, um, oh man. So go where you're comfortable and don't feel like you have to do everything because you just can't. Yeah, like it's, it's unrealistic and it's another one of those perfectionist, unhealthy things where, like jack of all trades is a master of none um i know it's not how the whole phrase goes but we're gonna stop it there because it makes my point um oh oh more oh god uh how do you get rid of cosplays if you're unable to sell them or give them to someone can you goodwill them are they destined for the trash um i have donated some before uh but honestly a lot of times um because i've talked to goodwill employees about it they they will get thrown away because it's like what the hell is this it's not halloween um and they're not going to hang on to it for that long um so i really 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 try to just like cosplay fairy godmother it like if if i'm actually done with the costume and i know that i'm not going to be able to sell it or i've tried to sell it and i can't like i will give it away like and, and if i can't like uh I, I still cringe when it's like you feel like you're throwing away the money, but it's like if it's sitting there gathering dust and you haven't worn it in like four years, 
the money's already thrown, ain't it? So I'm the worst at that. I have so many costumes that I need to uh, rehome and get rid of and and whatnot. And uh, I'm actually getting more. I'm getting Tony's all Tony's old stuff. Oh so, my god! Uh, yeah. Stuff. So yeah, it's it's you do what you can. I I will use things as patterns. I will repurpose things. I'll use things again. Like yeah. if something fits really, really well, you can cut it up and use it as a pattern for something yeah. else. Yeah. Or, or like reuse stuff. Um, like either, either reuse materials if you can, especially if you have like warble as a base of something like just rip off the foam details and build again on top of it sort of deal. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's harder to repurpose when it's a finished piece but it's, it's doable. It's doable. Uh, how has the scene changed over the past decade? Uh, it is, wow, that's a lot too. Um, it's changed a lot. It's, it's, it's definitely changed a lot. It's the, the conventions are more frequent and bigger. Um, some argue that it's turned into a quantity over quality thing, which, you know, I can kind of, I can understand that argument. Um, the bigger shows have gotten more pop culture-y, uh, like San Diego Comic-Con. So many of the OGs don't do San Diego or Anime Expo anymore because it's just pop culture fest, um, essentially, which again, is fine. It's fun, um, but doesn't necessarily stay to the roots that a lot of people appreciate. Um, as far as like cosplaying in and of itself, like just the accessibility is through the roof. And I love that. The fact that like I bought a Ninja Catwoman costume off of eBay for $35. Yes, like love this, this could never happen before. Um, but also uh, there are a lot of like older attitudes that are still around that don't serve us anymore. Like the gatekeeping and stuff like that. Um, uh, Cosplay has incorporated so many special effects and artistic techniques in the past 10 years, yes. Cosplay is borrowed again from from drag queens, from FX artists, from everything. Like it's become so much more. Like if you're if you're a cosplayer, like if you think about it, like a movie has like 17 hair people, 47 makeup people, costume designer, like sourcing, like somebody picks out the shoes, like everything, like MUA. And if you're a cosplayer, you're doing all that stuff like yourself mm -hmm. so uh, be talented yo you got anything else about how it changed in the past 10 years because i'm like overwhelmed by that question well there's a lot of um it, it really has there there didn't used to, you know cosplayers were either there just for fun or if they were at a booth you know it was it was very, very rare. Now professional cosplay has taken off. There are professional cosplayers. There's a lot of them. Cosplayers have their own tables and their own booths now. They're guests at shows, whereas before you know, they were just attendees. Mm -hmm. yeah. so people and... know what it is. You say cosplay, oh. they know what cosplay is, where there was a time when they- the word. What? What oh, cosplay? Yeah. I don't know what that is. <laughs> what does that word mean? I don't know. Uh, the cosplay yeah. attitude scene has also changed as well, but that's how the times are. It's either adapt or step to the side. And I mean, if people want to stay in their bubble and and like do whatever they want to do, like it's it's a a hobby for most people. So just let it be a hobby. Like don't. Yeah, and don't force yourself out of your comfort zone to a fault. If you don't like the direction that something is going in, you don't have to participate in that direction. Like, don't don't force yourself to do something bad. But also, don't don't push your opinions on other people. Life lessons, by Leah. Um, what is the best, nicest slash whatever fandom you've cosplayed from? Um, I really love Overwatch cosplayers. Like Overwatch cosplayers seem really, really cool, at least locally. But other than that, I don't know. Star Trek? Star Trek people are hardcore. I know, I love it. <laughs> so hardcore. They're like, we're doing a Star Trek wedding at the con. And 
Yeah, Star Trek people are super hardcore. Yes, and I love it. I'm here for all of it. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, what about what about you? Would it be Star Trek? Do you think? That yeah, as far as like niceness. Um, but you know your DC groups are very very tight knit and they love everybody. You know those photo shoots take like two three hours. You're like oh come do the the photo shoot for DC and it's like I, I can't be gone for two and a half hours. <laughs> but I would love, I'd love to. to. <laughs> yeah, but... that's such a thing. Oh God. Uh, what is one other cosplayer you look up to and why? Um, other than present company. Uh, honestly, though, like dead ass, probably like the the biggest one that I could say is Kara because like she and I go back so 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 far and like there have been so many people who've like come and gone in this time and the only two people that are still around is me and her so <laughs> so like and and obviously like she's she's producing like she's in costume right now because she was shooting like she's like her hustle is insane um so and like being a whole functional adult outside of that it's crazy uh da, 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 oh, no that's uh, not a part of it <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh okay 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 oh gosh more more twitch um where do you think the scene is going where will it be in 10 years except lots of masks oh well. do you have co recommendations for cosplaying during these COVID-19 times oh sorry I missed something way earlier it was talking about like uh recommendations for sweating and stuff um spray on deodorant all over your body mm -hmm. like antiperspirant yes. deodorant not just deodorant all over like quadruple layers on the normal bits um so yeah not gonna linger on that one i honestly don't know um i like i'm just kind of like watching where it goes and enjoying the ride and like adapting however well i see a lot of it going into porn yeah and we're human everything we do is going to turn to porn <laughs> um but <laughs> I, I am seeing a lot of that. And my big thing is I want to make sure that new cosplayers don't feel like they're required to do that to succeed. You don't oh, have yeah. a professional cosplayer. And I will tell you, there are a lot of girls out there, you know, showing their girly bits and not making a living out of it. And then they feel that. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do that because you love it and you enjoy it, hey, more power to you, but don't go out there feeling like you have to do that to succeed. Because yeah. one, you might not succeed doing it. And two, you don't have to. Yeah, it's it's very much unnecessary. And there's a lot of, like you guys all know, um, there's so much pressure out there with like social media and just like, what everybody else is doing and so, oh no goodbye sharky hat um and yeah just don't let the the peer pressure get to you and if anybody does yeah it's very rule 34 um if anybody does pressure you into that then they are not a person that's worth having around like point blank exactly like, don't and on that i do have to go because i have i have another show that i have to be on in like four minutes but keep going <gasps> i love you We'll talk soon. I love you so much, Kara. AZ, Power Girl, Kara, Nicole, a nice sister. I love you. Bye. Love you. <laughs> Hopefully we don't totally screw up the camera with this. Okay, bye. Let me see what happens. Um, oh, cool. It just did it automatically. That makes me feel much better about not breaking everything. Okay, now we just gone. We can talk crap. Um, Recommendations for cosplaying during these COVID times. Yeah, just like do do whatever you need to do, like especially during COVID-19. Like this is not, like take care of yourself. Like if you want to make something cool, if you lose your motivation, um, like artist librarian said, hi, um, then like don't, don't force yourself to do anything. Focus on self-care above everything else. Um, well, not above everything else, like still be a decent human being and don't completely, Okay. you you know what i mean you know what i mean um what's the best way to promote and market yourself as a cosplayer uh honestly the way that i got started was like i was going to local shows so much i 
like kept introducing myself to the same artist being like oh my god I love your stuff oh my god I love your stuff can I cosplay your character oh my god I love this stuff and eventually it turned into like hey do you need help with con and then it turned into like do you uh people were coming to their booth to see me so it, it's kind of like a, a rungs of the ladder situation um yeah does that make sense that totally makes sense um but also just keep hustling on social media don't um don't ne neglect anyone for the other uh don't jump on fads and rely too hard on them like we see what's going on with tiktok right now uh yeah let's see motivation no cons running out of content yep same uh any so, uh, bleh. i'm so bleh today <laughs> How many suggestions for incorporating masks into costumes? Um, honestly, there are so many cute ways to incorporate your, like the patterns or whatever the case may be. So a lot of cool costumes can do like the gator style, um, which are not actually very effective. So take that as you will. Um, but there, it's so easy to incorporate uh, your patterns, your fabrics, your whatever the case into a mask. So I, or just use a disposable one. Like, honestly, nobody's gonna, anybody who gives you crap for that is not it, thief. Um, friends, yay, stay at home cosplays, yes. Shooting yourself is the biggest thing that I have problems with. So, like, taking pictures of all the stuff that I have is difficult. Uh, hi, Beauty Bar, Sammy City. <gasps> yeah, I love you. I miss you. As soon as we can, let's go eat Korean food, please. Um, so I know it's so good to see you guys, like honestly, just seeing everybody in chat, like seeing your names makes me really happy. I miss you guys a lot, like uh, uh, so much. Um, oh, also, just so you guys know, um, we haven't uh, finalized everything yet, but just so you have some information about the um, actual costume contest for the show, We've decided that it's going to probably take place uh, in mid-January. It's going to be a separate thing with Zoom judging, and it's going to be really cool and really organized. Um, it's not going to happen yet because we realized, like, nobody had the opportunity to actually uh, work on their costumes. Like, everybody set their stuff to the side and forgot about it because Miss Rona has showed up. So, um, keep posted, and I will let you know as soon as I find out anything for sure. Um, however, we're not done with the questions yet, by the way. Oh God, it's already three. Oh my God. Um, I'll talk fast. Uh, I do want to announce a contest slash giveaway that's just chill for us here now. Um, on social media, uh, either on my Facebook page or on uh, Instagram, post a picture of just what you're currently working on, like cosplay wise. It doesn't have to be finished. There's no pressure. There's no nothing. It's just calm and chill and cool I'm just gonna see what everybody else is working on um and just tell me about it like in the comments in your caption uh and let's just talk about like how we're doing and covid and and getting the again the motivation to work on stuff uh tag me in it the only way i'll see it is if you tag me in it uh and use the hashtag kawaiicon goes virtual and then uh, i will be giving away a $50 Amazon gift card sponsored by Noe's Attic, which is a mini slash wargaming company. Super freaking cool. Um, and also, I will be giving away a commission by Art Till Dawn, uh, Michael, who I think might be in chat. Um, so I will post about that later. It is a thing. I love you guys, and I hope that you have fun with that. A um, few more questions. I don't know how much time I have left. Uh, where am I getting yelled at? I don't know. Ah. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure that I don't run over too much. Um, yes, thank you, Noah. You are in chat too. You guys are the actual best in the whole world. Uh, da, 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 da. Have time to make a new one out. Yeah, exactly. If you want to make a new cosplay for this, totally can. Um, if you want to go hard uh, for January, totally can. Like, it's COVID, nothing's normal. Um, okay, let me try to spit out a few more questions. Um, I love you, Courtney. Oh, well, you're breathtaking. Um, anyone mentor you? Who would it be? Kumui Cosplay. We're going to start rapid firing these guys so I don't go too too late. Uh, what's your favorite moment from your cosplay career? Um, meeting Stanley for the first time. Uh, my friend Ivy Doom Kitty 
Um, yeah, Art Hold On is friggin' awesome. Like, thank you guys both so much. Give them a follow here on Twitch, anywhere else on socials. I'll plug them in this thing too. So remember, a really awesome commission piece and fifty dollar Amazon gift card. Um, yeah, no, no, it's not for me. Thanks, yeah. Uh, yeah. Am I done? Oh no, I didn't have more questions. Angel, tell me in Twitch chat if I'm done or in the panelist thing on Discord. Um, what does being a cosplayer mean to you? It's dressing up and making friends that like the same nerdy stuff as me. Gotcha, Angel, thank you. Um, it's it's playing dress up. Like we had fun with it at eight. Why can't we have fun with it at 35? I'm not 35 yet, but you know what I mean. Uh, da, da, da. Do you have any tips for dealing with hateful comments online? Tag me in. I I will get them for you. <laughs> um, not kidding. Uh, where do you look for inspiration? Uh, the games that I'm currently playing, the books that I'm currently reading. Um, honestly, I, it, it, it's like the universe tells you when it's something that you need to cosplay. You see something and you're like, oh. so it's it's everywhere. It's really everywhere. Um, let me see. Career process like, oh, God, that's too long of a question. Uh, my, my biggest advice, because I've seen this, um, my biggest advice for getting into cosplay um, as just like a hobby is like go to Goodwill, get some beat up stuff and play with it. Uh, YouTube videos, like just just don't be afraid to get a little bit messy with it. It's like Miss Frizzle. Like, so yeah. God, I'm just like rapid firing so much. I'm like, oh my God. All right. I'm going to actually get out of here with that being like Miss Frizzle style, uh, make mistakes, get messy. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I got. And I, I mean it. If anybody's mean to you online, tag me in. And I'm, I'll like Mama Leah at them. It's great. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I'm done. So thank you guys so 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 much for hanging out with me i really had fun um if anybody recorded this that would be cool uh i appreciate all of you and i hope you're keeping safe please wash your hands please wear a mask this is so so weird um if you're 18 or over vote um and if you want to talk about anything cosplay related or not whatever um hit me up on social media my username leah rose ftw same thing everywhere literally the same thing everywhere so yeah that is all i got and please keep in touch and keep safe and i love you all so 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 much bye bye thanks dear